All right, guys, continuing on with the test review. Uh, number nine, a Delta connected three phase load is connected to a 575 volt line. I'm not sure where I grabbed that value from, but I'm, on the test, I'm going to give you standard voltages 600, 28, 480 standard voltages, not 575 volts. Uh, but let's see, the, we have 575 volts as the line voltage, which is clearly seen right here. Load impedance of 14 ohms, and we're looking for the total VA for this three phase load. So we have two equations for VA that we can use. We can either use uh, VA is equal to V line times I line times root three, or we can use VA is equal to V phase times I phase times three. Okay, so I'm going to use both of them. You guys just decide one or the other to do to find a value that's close to these guys that are given. Okay, so do we know any of those values? We know the line voltage of 575. So we've got 575 volts on the line. We don't know our line current yet. And phase voltage. Well, we know that, right? Because we know for a delta, we know that the voltage on the phase is identical. Okay, so our VA here is equal to 575 volts on the phase. We don't know our phase current yet though, so let's find that. Uh, phase current would be right here. Let's just drop that down here. So I phase would be equal to 575 volts on the phase divided by our 14 ohms on the phase. And what does that give us? 575 divided by 14 gives us 41.07 amps. Okay, so we can drop that in here, 41.07 amps. And we'll multiply those guys by three to give us our VA. Uh, continuing it on to find our line current. So we'll just put our line current over here. We know that our line current would be equal to our phase current times root three, haven't left much room there. I'm gonna bring that, and eliminate that and bring that over here. Line current over here would be equal to my phase current times root three, which is equal to uh, 41.07 amps times root three. I line is equal to, let's see, 41.07, come on, 41.07 times the square root of three gives us 71.135 amps. Beautiful, okay? So that value is right here on our line. So we can drop that one in here, 71.135. times root three. And let's see if either one of those guys gives us a value that is close to these guys. So let's start off with the, the line values here first. So we've got 575 times 71.135 amps. And we're multiplying that by the square root of three. And that gives us 70,845.42. Okay, very close to this value right here. So uh, just rounding would be the issue between uh, the previous value that I got and this value right here. Okay, let's take a look at the, the phase values here. So there we've got 575 volts. We're gonna multiply that by uh, 41.07 amps and we'll multiply that by three phase. And that gives us 70,845.75. Okay, these guys are essentially the same values. You can use either the line values or the phase values. And you can see that very close to D for our final answer there.
All right, guys, next one, number 10. Uh, if the loads in question nine are reconnected to form a Y connection instead of the delta, what would be the apparent power of the circuit? So for that one, what we need to do is we need to look at the same equations, right? So we've got uh, VA is equal to V line times I line times root three. Or we're using the phase values. Again, VA is equal to V phase times I phase. We're going to multiply the phase values by three. So what values have we been given? We've been given the 575 volts on the line. Uh, but we don't know the line current. We don't know the phase current. We don't even know the phase voltage yet. So let's find the phase voltage now. So our phase voltage is going to be equal to our line voltage of 575 volts on the line divided by root 3. Again, these are funky voltages, but let's work with them. Uh, phase voltage is going to be, let's see, oh, looks like I've already found it here. 575 divided by root 3 gives us 331.98. And again, that's our phase voltage. So that's the voltage that's across any of these phase impedances, 331.98 volts on the phase. And now we can find our phase current, right? Our phase current would be, I'm just going to eliminate this guy right here. Our phase current would be right here. And so our I phase would be equal to, what, 331.98 volts impressed across 14 ohms of impedance. And so our phase current would be equal to, let's see, 331.98 divided by 14 ohms gives us 23.71. Okay, then we can look at uh, our line current here. Our line current would be on the outside. So on the line current here, oh, it would be the identical, right? Because there's only one path for those guys to flow. So our line current over here is also going to be equal to 23.71 amps. Beautiful. So we can put those values in for our current values. Line current here is 23.71 amps. We're going to multiply that by root 3. Uh, or in order to find our VA, with the phase values, we got 331.98 volts on the phase. Our phase current is 23.71 amps, and we're going to multiply that by 3. And these values should essentially be the same. Okay, let's just double check those guys. So let's start with our line values here. So we got 575 times 23.71. We're going to multiply that by the square root of 3. That gives us 23613.48. Okay, let's see if we get the same value with these guys here. Now again, you don't have to do both of these. You can just do one or the other, right? To save some time. 331.98 volts on the phase times 23.71 amps on the phase times three phases gives us 23.613.74. Beautiful. Okay. Either one of those guys, we're looking for a value that's very close to those, and there's one that's bang on. So 10 is going to be A. Beautiful. Right on. Another thing to notice here is uh, is these power values. So later on, we're going to look at uh, induction motors, larger induction motors and starting them up, um, and ways that we can start them up by reducing the, the current by reducing the voltage. So they're called reduced voltage starters, and one of the ones that are prevalent in industry are a star delta starter. So you can see here that the same impedance with the same line voltage is going to draw a lot less power than the same load, same impedance, same line voltage, 
but connected in a delta. So the star delta starter starts up the motor in a Y configuration or a star configuration. You can see that it draws a lot less power at startup. Then once the motor's up and running, then we get our counter EMF developing, and then we can jam it onto a delta and get full torque out of the machine. So it's a way of starting up larger motors and having them draw less power at startup simply by changing the configuration of the windings there. Okay, so time enough in this uh, video to do another question here. So let's go to our next question here. So what do we got? Number 11. So we'll bang this off and then we'll stop uh, for a bit. You can grab a drink before you start the next video on question number 12. Let's bang off number 11 before we take a break. So number 11, I want you to change this if you have this in front of you to 347. It must have just been a typo there with the 346. Um, and let's look at our current, our values here. We've got um, a full low current of 28.9 amps. So that's our value for our line current. Voltage is 347 on the phase. And the power factor is 80% uh, lagging. Don't worry about the lagging. I mean, almost 90% of uh, loads are lagging there. I've just put that in just to throw you off there. Okay, so let's see. Let's start off with whatever value we can start with. Let's start with the first one, the voltage measured across the line terminals of the alternator. Okay, well it says each phase of a Y connected alternator delivers a full low current of 28.9 amps and a phase voltage of 347 and a power factor of 80%. Okay, so if the phase voltage is 347, we know that the line voltage is going to be 600 volts. Right? Let's just double check there though. Uh, our line voltage there is gonna be equal to our phase voltage times root three, right? So we know that our line voltage is gonna be equal to our phase voltage of 347. Uh, that's why I've done that with the lower value for 346, because this is just gonna be a touch higher than uh, 600 volts. Our line voltage there is 347 times root three. So let's take a look. Uh, 347 volts, easy now. 347 divided by the square root of 3 gives us, oh, you can see the brackets there, how I've screwed this up. I'm trying to rush through it. 347 divided by the square root of 3 gives me, whoa, what's going on? Is that right? No, I'm supposed to be multiplying that. All right, so you can see how, like, Little things will screw you up, but you know that the voltage on the line has got to be greater than the voltage on the phase, right? So let's actually look at what we're supposed to be doing here. 347, instead of dividing, we're supposed to be multiplying by the square root of 3. Ah, uh, there we go. 601 volts. We're going to take that as 600 volts and move on. That's our standard voltages. Beautiful. So we got a line voltage of 600 volts. And so that means that this voltage from here to here is going to be 600 volts from line to line. Beautiful. Okay. Then I'm asking you for the kilowatts, the kVars, and the kVA. Well, where to start there? Maybe I'm trying to screw up by the putting the kilowatts first, then the kVars, and then finally the kVA. We already know the equation for kVA, so let's start with that guy. So these guys are not necessarily in the order that you need to tackle them in. We know that the equation for VA from previous questions is equal to V line times I line times root three. Dropping our values in there. We know that our line voltage is now 600 volts. Our line current is 28.9 amps. And we're gonna multiply that by root three. 600 times 28.9 times root three. They give us 30,033. Let's take that as 30,000 kVA because I believe I was looking for um, a nice round number there at 30 kVA. Beautiful. Okay, we know that value, so we're going to drop that in with confidence. 
And now we need to have the kilowatts and the k bars. So how, how do you go about finding those values? Well, we could use the power factor to find our kilowatts because we know the power factor is equal to um, watts over VA, right? We know the power factor that was given right there. We now know the VA, so let's use that relationship in order to find our kilowatts. So next thing we're going to do is to find our kilowatts. And how do we, what equation are we going to use? Let's see. We know that our power factor is equal to watts over VA, which would be the same ratio as our kilowatts over our KVA. So our kilowatts looks like it's the power factor times our KVA. Power factor is what? 80%? And our KVA we just found at 30 KVA. So 80% of 30 24. So we got 24 kilowatts on that load. Okay, we'll drop that in here. 24 kilowatts. And now how do you find the k-vars? Well, some of you will say, well, we know the k-vars is on the opposite. That's going to use sine. So we could use sine in order to find that. Uh, or we could just organize our values here in a right angle triangle. So whenever you're stuck, just use a right angle triangle to organize the values that you have found. We found 30 kVA. We found 24 kilowatts. Again, this is our hypotenuse. This guy is our adjacent. And this guy is our opposite. And so our kVars is the last value we need to find. So we can do uh, two ways. We can find this angle and then use sine with this hypotenuse value. Or we can just use Pythagorean's theorem. We can take this area right here, minus this area right here, and that'll provide us with the opposite area. Okay, so let's do that. That seems to be the easiest way. So last thing is C for the k-bars. Our k-bars are going to be equal to our kilowatt, sorry, our kVA squared minus our kilowatts, so our hypotenuse minus the adjacent squared, and then we're going to take the square root of those values. Okay, so let's drop in the values that we know. Uh, so we've got our kVA. Our kVA is 30 kVA. We're going to square that to find the area. Then we've got 24 kilowatts. Again, we're going to square that to find the area. You may need double brackets on your calculator, and then we're going to take the square root of everything. So our kVars are equal to uh, let's find that value. So let's bring this over here. Let's clear everything out. And we're going to put this into the calculator exactly as shown. So I'm going to do second function, square root. I'm going to do double brackets. I'm going to do 30, close brackets, uh, squared, minus brackets, 24, close brackets, squared, and then the final bracket there to close everything off. We'll hit equals. Beautiful. So we got 18 k bars for our final value. So what looked like a disgusting question with no clear uh, direction as to how to find the values, we now just use a right angle triangle to find all those values there. All right, guys, I'll stop there. Uh, continue on the playlist and you'll find it just continues on with uh, question 12.